So hi, Mike Grobe Hunter here. And today I want to talk about videos and photographs using a microscope. What's the better thing? Should you take pictures or should you make videos? Uh, what should you do? And many of you are probably going to say, well, it depends really a lot on what you want to do later on uh, with the image or the video. If you want to make YouTube videos, then of course you're going to take a video. Um, and if you want to publish pictures on Instagram or on Facebook or on Reddit, um, then of course you're going to use pictures, okay? But I think I claim that this is not the right approach um, and I would like to explain in this video why the choice of medium should depend on the specimen and not on what you want to do with it later. Okay, let me explain. Well, to give you a short answer first, if the specimen under the microscope is not moving very much, it's mostly static, then take a picture. And if it is moving, and especially if it's moving quickly, then you should make a video. Later on, you can always convert one form into the other. I'm going to explain this as well. But why is that? The reason is, is, is because you want to capture as much image information as possible when you actually take a picture or make a video. If you use the wrong format, then you're losing some image information. I would like to um, um, illustrate uh, this to you. This here, for example, is a heliozoan. It is um, a water organism and it does not move around very much. It's very, very slow moving. Um, you can make a time lapse and then you're able to see it move a little bit, but generally it is mostly static. In this case, definitely take a picture. And the reason is, is because then you have also higher resolution because photographs, uh, digital photographs, generally have a higher resolution than videos. Even if it's a full HD video, the resolution and number of pixels overall is lower than when you take a picture. And if you take a picture, then later on you have simply more possibilities also to crop, do a little bit of cropping, um, color adjustment and so on. And you don't lose too much image information this way. Now, if you want to convert this picture into a video, then that is easily possible using video editing software anyway. Um, so, for example, you can add a digital zoom to it without losing much image resolution or you can use, uh, do some panning um, of the video. All of this is possible uh, starting from um, a picture. Now, as there's another advantage of taking pictures and that is, is uh, that you can do a so-called a focus stacking. And this means that um, you are able to take pictures of different uh, focus levels and then combining it using software into one overall um, image that is focus all in focus all the way from the top uh, to the very bottom. And this is not possible in video, at least uh, not yet. So this is uh, basically the recommendation that I have for static specimens or for specimens that don't move take a picture, it gives you simply more flexibility. Now, if the specimen is moving, like for example, fast moving protozoa, for example, like in this case, then by all means do take a video. Photographs can be a disadvantage here. There are several reasons for this as well. First of all, um, if you have a protozoa that move around, um, then generally it is often like this that some of them will move in and out of focus. So this means some of them will swim up or they swim down and they're blurry. Um, however, when you have a video, this does not disturb so much, but it becomes very evident when you look at it on a static image. And the second uh, reason is, is that if you take uh, photographs, um, then there might be indeed the problem of motion blur. So um, if you, even if it is in focus, if the organism is moving very quickly, then it might not appear very crisp, but also a little bit fuzzy because of the shut this relatively slow shutter speed. If you take a video, uh, this doesn't disturb because uh, you know, the, the eyes are following the movement and the brain connects it together into a smooth movement and the motion blur really is not a problem. You don't see it as much, you, we don't see recognize it. And for this reason, it is better for moving objects to uh, take a video. Now, if you want to have a static image because you want to take a picture um, that you want to post somewhere, then in a video editing program, go through the individual frames of the video and extract those frames where most of the organisms are both in focus and where the motion blur is not too high. So essentially by taking a video, you're taking many individual pictures and then you can choose uh, from the best one. 
If you also need uh, to have a very high resolution image, um, also with a you know, one that freezes the movement, and if you do want to take a picture of a moving object, of course uh, that is also possible, but just make sure that you have a lot of light to keep the shutter speed very short to reduce motion blur, um, and also use a very little um, mounting medium or water to squeeze the organism a little bit between cover glass and slide so that it cannot move vertically so much, so that you can focus on it much more easily. So what I just wanted to make clear here is, is that uh, it is possible to convert one form into the other form and that you should, in my view, uh, place uh, the, or make the choice um, of whether it's a video or whether it's a picture on whether the specimen is moving or not. And then later on you worry about later or what, how you're going to then, if you want to make a video or if you want to take a picture, okay? So I simply wanted to, to share this uh, with you a little bit. Do leave your comments behind, of course. Yeah, happy microbe hunting as always. See you around next time. Bye-bye.